Yellowstone volcano is moving and it could result in a huge eruption. This is what USGS Yellowstone Volcano Observatory explains for us. Sean Martin Express UK reports. Yellowstone, as we know, is a supervolcano. And we keep an eye on, out on it as to what it's doing. We know it's deforming. We know that it's uh, rising towards the northeast. And uh, it's also having temperature changes. It's also having a very big increase in the steamboat geyser, which started erupting last March and is still erupting up to today. And uh, the ledge geyser, which again, both of these are found in the Norris Geyser Basin, and they have increased activity, eruption activity, which is something very unusual. Now, thank goodness, we noticed uh, a few hours ago that the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory has placed a thermal monitor near Steamboat Geyser. They did not have one since March of last year. And uh, it's been working now since, I think, the uh, 19th of May. So we looked at that yesterday, or well, not yesterday, just a few hours ago. I, I posted a video on Yellowstone activity and we took a look at the temperature of uh, the steamboat geyser and we noticed that when it erupts the temperature of course goes down and as the temperature builds up that's an indication that it's about to erupt which is normal. Now Yellowstone supervolcano they say is on the move. Scientists revealed after noticing the potentially catastrophic caldera is shifting and that could, of course, cause an eruption. There are signs that they look at. The signs are gas, build-up gas emissions, steam, uh, the uh, geothermal and the hydrothermal activity of the uh, supervolcano, the steam build-up, also the uh, temperature, and they've even found a new location northwest of West Thumb Lake, that's the western part of the lake. Yellowstone Lake is, as we know, on top of the volcano caldera. It's sitting on top of the caldera. And uh, it's a big lake. It's very big. It's about 30, 40 miles wide. And um, even the waves of that lake lapping onto each other could cause an earthquake if they make enough movement. And that is, of course, something that the geologists say is uh, stressful for them because that could create an earthquake in the area of the magma chamber whose roof is right underneath the Yellowstone Lake. So they have found a new thermal area just west, northwest of West Thumb Lake an area that I suppose they will be visiting now that they started their geological field trips as of 1st of May, and they will be coming back reporting on that as soon as they have all the information to give us. Now, researchers have discovered the U.S.'s most feared volcano is on the move. It's one of the most dangerous supervolcanoes in the world, actually. It holds 60% of the world's geysers. It has over 10,000 hydrothermal areas. Not all of them have yet been mapped. Let's remember that Yellowstone Volcano Observatory was only set up there in the year 2001. It's basically 19 years old. And it was placed there after a BBC documentary on Yellowstone Supervolcano that came out in the year 2000. So uh, after the US government noticed that documentary on Yellowstone. They decided to give the order to open up a new observatory right there at the supervolcano of Yellowstone, and that's when the observatory was set up in the year 2001. Now, we know it's the most uh, dangerous volcano in the world. It's the source of the Yellowstone caldera, and it's drifting eastward, actually northeastward. It started from basically where the uh, California Long Valley Volcano is around Los Angeles area, and it worked its way up northeast 
through Nevada, through Idaho, through Craters of the Moon in Idaho, all the way up uh, to uh, where it is today. And it's basically the hot spot is working itself northeast. So um, it's not actually the volcano which is moving, but what is below it. The North American plate is moving slowly southwest across Yellowstone volcano by an average of 4.6 centimeters every single year. That's about an inch or so, more than an inch, more than an inch, about two inches. It's moving two inches a year. Now it's on the move. That's what they mean, it's on the move. It's on the move, it's pretty much on the move. For reference, 4.6 centimeters, about a centimeter more than the rate at which fingernails grow in one year. So you can imagine. The USGS explains on this website, actually the source of the hotspot is more or less stationary at depth within the Earth, and it's the North American plate that moves southwest across the hotspot. So, the average rate of movement of the plate in the Yellowstone area for the last 16 and a half million years has been about 4.6 centimeters every year. And they say, however, if, a shorter, if shorter time intervals are analyzed, the plate can be inferred to have moved about 6.1 centimeters per year from 16 and a half million years ago until about 8 million years ago. So it seems that it was traveling faster at that time. And then it slowed down to 3.3 centimeters a year for the past 8 million years. The moving of the plate could be bad news in terms of the Yellowstone volcano eruption. A study last year found previous eruptions could have been caused by tectonic plates rubbing against each other beneath the surface of the Earth, generating huge amounts of heat and not by a plume connected to the Earth's core. Okay? The tectonic plates rubbing against each other under the surface generate the huge amounts of heat. And it's not the plume connected to the Earth's core. See, every few, every few weeks they come out with new information and they enlighten us as to what is going on in Yellowstone. We thought it was the plume, the hot spot. No, it's not that. It's the rubbing of the tectonic plates between each other that's causing these huge amounts of heat. The lead author of the study is Ying Zhu, an associate professor with the Virginia Tech College of Sciences, Departments of Geosciences, and uh, oh, Virginia. Okay, so that's where our friend uh, the, the abbot is. I think he's in Virginia, <laughs> beautiful Virginia. Okay, so uh, in this search, there was no evidence of heat coming directly up from the Earth's core to power the surface volcano at Yellowstone. That's what he said in his research. No evidence of heat coming from the Earth. In other words, the magma plume. I'm sure that there is heat coming up from the magma plume. You can't not just throw that out the window. Magma plumes have heat. <laughs> Whether we like it or not, they're coming in from the core of the Earth. They have heat. Now, they may, there may be more heat than usual because of the tectonic plates rubbing against each other with the friction created, creating huge amounts of heat. You know, there may be, to, for that to be happening, there must be um, okay, I'm not a geologist, but I'm trying to find the, the terms. I mean, when you have things that huge and weighty rubbing against each other, you're going to have a low frequency type of an earthquake a tremor, whatever you would call it, an event, low frequency event, let's put it that way. Uh, it's, you know, they're finding new types of earthquakes all the time. For example, that there was an earthquake in Turkey that lasted 50 days, 50 days. And it's a shear strike area, that's a subduction zone in Turkey in the Anatolia Fault. And they, there was only one geologist that noticed it. He alerted his colleagues and other geologists, and they studied it and came to the conclusion that this does take place around the Earth, especially in the subduction zones. 
and it's a new type of wave that they've added to their lists of earthquakes. So, you know, these, uh, in November, November 11, 11, 11, actually, 11, 11, we had a worldwide tremor that lasted like for 20 minutes and people didn't even know what it was. They said, well, maybe it was a collapse of a magma chamber that was felt worldwide. Can you imagine having a worldwide earthquake? That is not at all good news in my book, not at all. A worldwide shaking for 20 minutes. Uh, you know, we do have instances of where the earth rings like a bell, like it did with the uh, Papua New Guinea uh, 7.5, 7.7 magnitude Richter a couple of days ago. All the uh, uh, meter, the the uh, seismometers were uh, ringing like ringing. It was for hours and days. They were ringing the, like bells. The, the earth was ringing like a bell everywhere. Uh, it's we tend to think of our earth as being so stable, but it's not. You know, it does shake. And the, one of the questions that I have in a lot of my in the comments that I received is, well, if it's ringing like a bell for so long and so intensely, what is that? What does that show? If it's ringing like a bell, a bell only rings if it's hollow, metallic and hollow inside, reverberating inside. So, you know, there's still a lot of things that we have not, we, we have to learn. A lot of things have not been revealed to us. You know. Now, this says here, the author, Yang Zhu, says it's not the magma plume, it's the uh, tectonic plates. Okay, well, I think it may be both, but anyway, I'm not the geologist. He says, instead, the underground images we capture suggest that Yellowstone volcanoes were produced by a gigantic ancient ocean plate that dove under the western United States about 30 million years ago. Okay, he's talking about the, the Pacific Plate, the Phaleron Plate. The process started at the Oregon-Idaho border about 16 million years ago and propagated northwestward, forming a line of volcanoes that are progressively younger as they stretch northwest to present-day Wyoming. There you go. If the north, that Wyoming is, as we know, where Yellowstone is uh, located, now, if the North American plate was moving slowly over a position-fixed plume at Yellowstone, it would displace older volcanoes towards the Oregon-Idaho border and form a line of volcanoes, but such a deep plume has not been found. If the Wyoming volcano were to erupt, an estimated 87,000 people would be killed immediately and two-thirds of the United States would immediately be made uninhabitable. A large spew of ash into the atmosphere would block out sunlight and act indirectly affect life beneath it, creating a volcanic winter. Now, the massive eruption could be 6,000 times as powerful as Mount St. Helens eruption was in 1980 that deposited ash in 11 different states and five Canadian provinces. And if supervolcano Yellowstone erupts, explodes, a climate shift would ensue as the volcano would spew massive amounts of sulfur dioxide into the atmosphere, and this can form a sulfur aerosol that reflects and absorbs sunlight. But scientists do not believe an eruption will come anytime soon, with USGS writing, there is no evidence that a catastrophic eruption at Yellowstone is imminent, and such events are like unlikely to occur in the next few centuries. Okay, thank you. Uh, that's, you know, they're trying to uh, ease our mind. But, uh, you know, volcanoes have a mind of their own. Let's remember the Denali earthquake in Alaska, the beginning of 2000. That shook Yellowstone so much. There was so much shaking that the Yellowstone seismometers could not record it because of this huge shaking. They clipped the, the seismometers clipped and they just couldn't uh, uh, reg register the Denali earthquake because of the huge shaking at Yellowstone. Can you imagine? Yellowstone is 2,000 miles away from Denali, Alaska.
If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media, and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.